I'm struggling. Now what? If you have ever asked yourself this question, if you know in your head that yes, you should unite your sufferings to the cross, if you know in your head intellectually that the solution to despair, the solution to discouragement, the solution to giving up on hope is clinging to the cross. If you know that in your head, but you find it harder to execute in real life, you are going to want to listen to every single second of today's podcast, because today I'm talking to the beautiful Kristalina Evert on her brand new book, Women Made New. We are going to have so much fun. Let's go. It is no secret that 2022 for me was a very interesting year. Those of you who know me really well and have been following me for a while, you know I use the word interesting when I would prefer to use a much more negative turn, but it has been interesting. It was a year of some business disappointment. It was a year of a uh, a baby being lost through miscarriage. It was a year of a lot of transition, making some big decisions, um, some of which have brought me back to Canada right now where I'm coming at you. I'm coming at you from my mom's house in Toronto, Canada. We have just received about... I'm going to hazard to guess about 10 centimeters of snow. I will say that snow is, I was kind of like, I'm going to hate snow, but I actually, it's like really nice to be back in cold. I I genuinely ask me this in another three months when it's still gray, if I'm saying the same thing. Um, But I have enjoyed the snow. My children have been enjoying the snow. My little Floridians who have never covered their feet in anything. I've got two American kids born in Florida. Those little ones have been like loving this new climate we're in. Anyway, but bringing it back to what we're talking about today, of course, I am no stranger to struggle. I am no stranger to suffering. And from my DMs, I know that there are so many of you watching, listening, who journey and share with me your things on Instagram that you are struggling to. So welcome to the Possibility Mom Live, the beautiful Kristalina Everett. Kristalina, how are you today? Hi. Hi, everyone. I am good. I, you know what? There's time where I really do get overwhelmed with just ministry and marriage and children, but overall I'm doing good, but you know what? It's normal. It's completely normal. And everything that you said I can relate to. So Um, we're all in good company here. Okay. Listen, your hair right now, if you're watching this on YouTube, my friends, Kristalina's hair is like epic. Did you do it? No, I haven't washed it either. I was just like, oh my gosh, it's a disaster. But maybe that's what actually makes it better, to be honest sometimes. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I'm so honest, an honest mom right now. Sometimes it just does what you want me to wash for a couple days. I typically only wash my hair. I'll be really honest. I'm like you. And I feel like we have similar texture, like thick and like a lot. So I typically only wash my hair on Fridays for my Friday show. And then oh, I'm there you go. <laughs> how long can I not wash my it's like at this point? All right, Kristalina. For Hello. many people will be very familiar with who you are, but for anyone listening or watching who is not familiar with you and your work, will you take a moment and just tell us who you are and what you do? I am married to Jason Everett, and we run a Chastity Project, and that is a ministry that we started together about maybe 20 years ago, and over time, it's really evolved, but I really wanted to minister to women, and I had to go through my own healing process, and I had to go to counseling, and after we got married, and maybe about three children in, I started really struggling with a lot of... um, emotional, just drama. I didn't know where it was coming from. I was struggling a lot in our marriage, especially in my motherhood. And I had to go to counseling. It was very humbling and hard, but it was such a big blessing because in there, I realized that when I was a little girl, I was sexually abused. And at that moment, it was one of the hardest moments of my life, but it was one of these aha moments because I felt like I finally understood myself for the first time. 
why I was sexualizing my anger in high school, why I did what I did, why it was hard to receive love, why it was hard to give love, all of those things. I just made so much sense to myself. It was a hard moment, but it was a good moment, you know, and I look back on that. But I also realized through my own healing process how hard it was for women to start one and to also get good Catholic um outreach during that time, because you're already going through so much and to sift through all of the nonsense that's out there just to get to the good Catholic teachings, talks, books, counselors, everything that you're going to need for that process came my Women Made New ministry that I have now. And I started Women Made New as almost just a stepping stone to help women start that healing process. If they want to find a good Catholic counselor, I've got that there for them. They want to find a Eucharist Adoration Chapel, I've got that there for them. All different talks from all sorts of different women, powerhouse women in the Catholic church and just good resources. It's like, okay, I want to start a healing process. Here you go, ladies. I kind of just put it out there for them. And I'm in the middle of redoing my website right now. So I'm really excited. And um, to launch that pretty soon for everyone, it'll be a big gift and even a gift to me. So I'm excited. Um, I'm curious if you can. So I can't I can't help but go here. Like I, I always go to want. The- <laughs> Let's go. Right. So I'm a, I'm a business and a mindset coach. Right. So I, yes. I can't help but go to some of these places. So sure. um, first question before we talk about your new book um, is when did you or or did you have a shift when you started to realize like this can make a living for my family. So the work that I'm doing, the work that my husband and I are doing, was there like a shift when you realized, oh my gosh, this is actually paying our bills? Or was it like a gradual over time kind of thing? Like, I'm so curious about that for you. What was you know, it? I, I started a Catholic Answers as a chastity apologist, if there was such a thing. I was it back in the day, but I kind of started already with it helping our family financially being a speaker and traveling around. So it always was that because Jason really set a good foundation for that. What was hard is when I actually had to stop working. I had to stop bringing that income because of motherhood. And there was a moment, maybe it was like the third, fourth one in after, and I was going through my healing process that it's like, you know, my, my babies need me home. I needed to be home. And it was really hard. And over the years, it was kind of pulling me. And there are times when that small, still voice and that God is asking you in prayer, like, this is what you need to do. And you don't want to do it. You don't want to carry that cross. You don't want to embrace his will in that moment. And it was, it's time to be home and be a mom and not really go out and do ministry. And I felt like a part of me had to die And really just hand that to Jesus. And it was really a dying to oneself for my children because it was not easy. It was very hard. I struggled with it. But I look back and I thank God for those moments where I really am obedient and I'm listening to his will because it's in those moments that he is truly doing what's best for me and what was best for my family at the time, even though if it was really up to the Crystalina, that wouldn't have happened, you know, but I think our faithfulness to those small, still voices that, that God has given us and listening to what he's asking are such a protection and our obedience to it. They're really blessings in the end. We may not understand in the moment, but wow, in the end, everything comes to fruition. So let me clarify though, real quick. Did you stop, like stop, like fully stop? Like, was there no website? Was there no social media? Or was there still some kind of presence? Like not much. No, I really did stay home. I would only do really big events. Like I did a world youth days, things like that, like massive events. But I really was home for a while where I wasn't doing anything. And I was having babies. I was pregnant, breastfeeding. And it was hard. It was really hard. But it was a time of pruning for me. And it was a time of growth. And it was a time of really embracing um, my children and my my motherhood. It was, and it was hard. What did it look like for you to re-enter? Because I get this question all the time. I get questions about like taking a break, not taking a break. Like what does it look mm-hmm. like? What, whatever you want to call it. So for you, I'm so curious. What did it look like to kind of come back to speaking, come back to leaving your house a little bit more? What did that look like for you? The kids were a little older, but it's like I've been having babies since I I feel like two weeks after my honeymoon, I have been breastfeeding or pregnant for 20 years. Okay. And there's been three miscarriages in between all of that. So we have 11 children total and our eight children now, but um, it was just like slow, gradual, I guess, speaking, just different engagements, different things and that God asked me to. And I, I'm really prayerful about 
everything that I do. I'm, I discern every talk, everything I'm asked. And there's times where I do say no, but at the end of the day, Jesus is my boss. I go there, I get my marching orders and I go. And he says, yes, he says, no, he says, do this, whatever. And it's amazing. Even those little things that you wake up, just like, I really should call that friend today, but you're like, you're so busy. And you're like, later, later. Well, you never know what that friend is going through. You never know what's happening in that moment that God is like, you need to call right now. And so I think it's the important thing out of all of this. And if anyone hears anything I say, is that really just listen to those promptings, because a lot of people say, well, I don't hear God's voice. Yes, you do. We all know right from wrong. We all know what we're supposed to be doing, what we're not supposed to be doing. If you should be dating that person, if you should be living in that state, if you should be in your job right now, deep down, everybody does have a sense what they should be doing and what they should not be doing. And it's not always easy. And it's in those times when it's not easy that we really need to embrace God's will because he does know best. That's what I've learned through trial and error. But yeah. The virtue of obedience is like not one that I, I not one I'm it's hard. I'm not great at obedience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it takes some time. Let me tell you, it really does. But you know, I, I had this moment in adoration. I was praying that Jesus died on the cross and, and he saved us. He died. He, he sacrificed everything. But if you really go back in the garden of Gethsemane, for me, I look there and I feel it was his obedience to the father's will to die on that cross. And that's really where it all started. Because if it wasn't for his just just willingness to go that obedience without a shadow of a doubt, he was doing it. And if we can really approach our lives like that, I mean, it will change your entire life will change hands down. And I've experienced it. And, oh, my God, and, God, oh, you're totally fine. Um, your, your amazing voluminous hair is, is not. It <laughs> <laughs> fell out when I had babies. Do you know that? You know what that's like ladies watching, you know, it like just all falls out and you're like in tears and getting handfuls of hair after you have babies. And you're just like, Oh my gosh. Oh. But you know what? It all comes back. It all, it all comes, comes back. back. It all comes it back. You right just right. rejuvenate everything. So this, this, this talk about obedience and doing things even when you want, don't want to and listening to the wrong things and, and dying inside sometimes like you described taking a break from your very public ministry and, and staying more homebound is a beautiful segue into your book. You have a beautiful new book that you have written, Women Made New, Reflections on Adversity, Transformation and Healing. And you have collected 12 um, stories, 12 voices inside of this book to share their triumphs, their journeys, their, their struggles. And I want to just read one of my favorite quotes that came from you actually. Um, so, but here's the truth. You're not fine. Neither am I. And that's okay. So let's get over this unrealistic expectation that our lives should look like a filtered social media pic. Instead of trying to mold our public image to fit a standard of bogus perfection, let's admit our brokenness and move forward to build the life that God intended for us. Why was this the time for this book, Kristalina? Because there was this one just burning question I constantly had to keep asking myself and it it had such barriers in my life to God's will and what he was trying to do. And that one question I want all women to ask themselves is what is it that is keeping you from becoming the woman God is calling you to be? And there's always something, there is something, and there's a root deep down. And then from that stem the vices, you know, and we tend to look at the vices that are rooting up from it, or I have an anger problem, or I have, I have issues with obedience, or I, I gossip, or I do this or that. But what is like the root that really keeps you from moving forward, entering into what God created you to be? Because all of us have a mission. We're all filled with mission, if we know it or not, a purpose, a plan, and you hold great importance. And your decisions right now hold weight in heaven and on earth. So whatever it is you do, even right after this, this podcast or whatever it is you're watching or doing during the day, your decisions hold weight. And we think, oh, well, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, it's not that bad. Yes, it is. If you're saying that in your life, I paved the way to hell in my life back when I was living crazy and drinking and doing everything, just giving, getting and taking everything the world wanted to give me. I, I really feel like I paved the way, my own way to hell with saying, oh, it's not that bad because she's much worse. You know, look at her. I'm doing great, you know? And it's like, no, you're not. If you have to justify sin, you're not doing okay. And I seem to be doing that a lot. But when you really can just stop and reflect and 
What is it that is keeping you from embracing and fully stepping into what you were created for? That's huge because then you're really going to dive in, not surfacy. You're going to go deep and whatever that may be. And maybe it's past trauma. Maybe you were sexually abused, raped, you had an abortion, whatever it is. Those are the things that you need to face and not be held captive by anymore. And is it easy? Absolutely not. But will God's grace abound? If he's calling you there, he will protect you there and he will give you all the tools and grace is necessary to get through whatever it is. Because if he's asking you, he's not going to leave you alone. He will walk through with you. What are some of your favorite tools? What, one of my favorite things in the book is, well, there's a couple of things. I feel like the tools we kind of know. Well, if you're a former yeah. Catholic, if you watch Kristalina and EWTN and all the things, you kind of have a sense. You know, stay close to the sacraments. You know, get yes. to um, confession. You know, go to adoration. You know, um, choose a life of virtue. Like, yeah, yes, we know. But what I personally find so challenging is like, I can go into deep despair. Like, I can really mm -hmm. listen to the voices of, it's always going to be like this. It's never going to change. Like very absolute, very enemy driven, like, like nothing hopeful, nothing like. And so a tool that I find helpful is a book like yours, like lots of stories, lots mm -hmm. of stories of different women in different seasons, different saints, different, like all the people, because then I'm like evidence. Well, it's not just this person, mm -hmm. like triumph through hard times. It's not just like this group of people from like this part of the world or something. No, no, there's lots of people. So a tool that I love is actually exactly a book like yours, hearing the stories mm -hmm. of many people who have been through adversity um, and, and come out the other side. What's a tool in your life, Kristalina, that's like so important to you? When I am experiencing that demonic dialogue and just that, like those put downs that all women experience in their own way, if it's, you're not pretty enough, you're not smart enough, you, you feel stupid and you just like, this is not for you because someone else could do this way better. Right. The devil wants to beat us up. And I see it, that Chinese proverb I love, and it keeps coming up for me is that death by a thousand cuts. Right. And I feel like spiritually, that's what the devil does to us. It's death by a thousand cuts spiritually. Oh, I'm ugly. Yeah, you're probably right. I am ugly. I and you start telling yourself that you become your own enemy for the evil one, right? Because if you can become the own, you're doing it yourself. He doesn't have to work as hard. So what a tool I learned from Emily Wilson, actually, when I interviewed her on my EW10 radio show, she said, whenever that happens to me, I just say out loud, Jesus, tell me the truth. And I have taken that and I use it. And sometimes I say it out loud and my kids are like, mom, who are you talking to? <laughs> Like, I'm talking to Jesus. Leave me alone right now. I need to pray. Like, I'm totally honest with my children. But you, and sometimes I'm saying it constantly throughout the day because some fights are harder than others. Day, it's just the ebbs and flows of life are going to be coming at you that we need to have these little tools to come come back at the evil one. Because if a man was coming at us, attacking us with a knife, we would like react. We, that assault was not going down. Like, you're going to fight. The evil one is coming at us with that same knife spiritually. And we just stand there and we take it. We take it. We invite it. We, we welcome it. And it's really sad. And women need to pick up their weapons. Ladies, pick your weapons of light up and learn how to fight in the spiritual realm. I feel like nobody knows how to fight. So they're getting eaten alive. And then they're dormant because they're scared to do anything because they feel less than and not good enough and, and way down in their sin and their brokenness and their past. And that's exactly where the evil one wants us. And that's one of the reasons I wrote this book. I actually, this book actually came from Lisa of I was really sick and hurt and I was bedridden while well, I was about eight months pregnant. I bent down and we just moved to Arizona. I bent down to get this juice box and I'll, I'll go as fast as I can with this. And when I bent down, you know, your body's really lucid. And I mean, I am ginormous. I bent down in a weird way and my bones open and they went back the wrong way. <gasps> so I tried to stand up and oh. my leg gave out. I was, I was crying. Jason had to pick me up. I mean, I'm, my toes are pregnant. I'm ginormous. And he had to take me to the emergency room. And they just said, oh, your sciatic is out. And like, pat me on the head. And I'm like, I am dislocated. Like, something's wrong. And I'm like, shaking in pain. And it was close to childbirth. That pain was so excruciating. I came home. I had to stay like that through the delivery. They, they couldn't figure out what was going on with me. It wasn't going away until way after. But during that time, 
there's times when you're crying out to God and there's times you're crying to God. I was crying out to God. And instead of rejecting and getting angry, I really entered into my relationship in the middle of prayer. I had a dream. I had this vision and I just, just my own personal just vision. And all of a sudden these women were standing with their backs to me. I mean, rows and rows of women, different ethnicities, sizes, and they kept throwing something behind them. I'm serious. And I'm like, what is that? And this black shadow was coming in and out. And I kind of froze when I saw this black shadow. And every time he'd passed, they were throwing these things behind them. And I said, Lord Jesus, what are those? And I turned around and I saw this desolate desert. And it was like rocks hitting wet sand. That, you know how it hits. And when it hit down, all of a sudden the sand would come up and swallow it like it wasn't there. Hmm. And they were the most magnificent gems and jewels and colors I've ever seen. And I said, Lord Jesus, what are those? And he says, those are the gifts, talents, and virtues that I have given women in their vocation. And they are throwing them away and giving way to the world. <gasps> and he, then he said to me, go out and find the gems and give them back to them. <gasps> and then I woke up and I said, what? I'm like, what just happened with like, gems? Where are these gems? Where do I even find them? Like, I was mad. I was frustrated. I'm like, where do I find them? And then it's like, well, I told Jason, he's like, well, okay, we'll pray about that. You know, like we'll pray about it. But time went on and really slowly my ministry evolved. I had my women made new television show. Then I had my women made new radio show podcast I have now, but I knew it wasn't it. And one day I was in adoration and I had this vision of like this book, but more of an arsenal, more of a book that I can weaponize women to help them really if you are dealing with divorce, you're dealing with sexual abuse, you're dealing with cutting, you're dealing with body image, you're dealing with um, in-laws, you're dealing with just your marriage falling apart, your kids are having issues, whatever it is, I wanted to hand these women, these powerhouse overcomers of all of these women's stories. All of these women in here are overcomers and they are powerful in their own way and in their own right. And every single one of them has a ministry that can help those women hold their hand and get them out of the muck. Like unlock those chains, ladies, and step into the powerful woman that God is calling you to be. And only you hold the keys and hold the will to step into it. But you got to show up to your own fight. Mm -hmm. And so this book will help you do that. And when I was talking to Catherine Hadro, I said, she's like, what do you want me to write about? And I told all the women this, but for some reason she was different. And she, and I said to her, well, whatever is Jesus gives you an adoration that you want to say to those women, I said, he's going to give you that gem that he wants you to say. And as soon as I said that, I said, oh my gosh, the gems, I'm collecting the gems. These are the gems and I'm able to give them back to women. So here you go, lady. <laughs> Well, it's, it, was, it was amazing. It's a very um, fascinating, the work that you and I do is, is fascinating. Like I, I, I really do. I thank God every day that I get to do this work because if we do not heal, there are a lot of ramifications. So like Ripples. tons. So number one, so for example, I really struggle with control. Right. So my my inner voice that keeps me from embracing what I'm called to do is control because that sort of like criticism. So it's like I, I want to control everything so that I cannot be criticized, so that I cannot fail, so on and so forth. So then I really struggle with like, oh, you're going to get it wrong. So then you probably shouldn't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if I don't work on this. And I've seen this evidence because I've got a lot of children and, and, and I've been parenting for a while. I now start to give that to my kids where they start being very afraid of failure, where they start to uh, maybe not step out into the unknown and do what they're called to do and so on and so forth. When we, and you've told your story so publicly about, you know, sexual um, healing, when we don't see ourselves the way that we are truly created, we do things and we do things to seek that love and that com that um, confirmation of who we are and whatnot. Um, so I find the work you and I do is so important because if we don't heal, it has huge ripples. But the work you and I do also is so interesting because we have the privilege of witnessing transformation yes. and witnessing what happens when you take human formation, spiritual formation, all the things, therapy, counseling, coaching, making plans, giving it all to the Lord, holding it with loose hands, playing to the cross when things don't work. There's a great, you, you have a lot of Mother Angelica 
books, uh, quotes in your book. Um, and there's one that made me laugh so hard. It, 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 and she just has this like gumption and this. It's, uh, it's awesome. Women don't really know, like, I guess our generation. And I just want to get that out there. She is an amazing overcomer and she came from divorce. She is a product of divorce. She came from a really hard background and I related to that and she struggled with anger and, <laughs> and some of my things and just ah, lashing out, you know, and just have to like, just harness that tongue. But, and it's difficult, but man, she's amazing. She is one of the overcomers. And I had the privilege of being able to go through um, 300 hours of her videos and her archives. And I was able to compile two chapters from her in this book. And the essence of Mother Angelica really is threaded through this book. Mm -hmm. But I really want to let women know that this strength and just this just saying yes to Jesus is so important because just like that quote, um, I think it was St. Teresa of Avila. I'm not sure though. Like when you become what you should be, you can set the world on fire. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is mother Angelica. Cause she's still, she's passed away. And from heaven, I feel she is still setting the world on fire, reaching people from all ends of the earth, just preaching the gospel with EWTN and everything that they do. It's amazing. There's a quote that you highlight of hers where she was like complaining. She was like, she was in physical pain. Mm. There was a lot of debt in the network. There was, she was just going on and on. And she like cried out to God, but like, why, why are you doing this? Why me? And then she flips it around and she heard God's voice. And, and it was like, why me? And, and like from God. Yes. There's a lot. There's a lot. Of Wait, what? It was so good. Um, and that, and so coming back to like the privilege of the work that we get to do, the transformation that we get to see, um, it can, it can, it's ongoing. That's what I want to say. This transformation is ongoing. So I want to know your favorite, like, do you have a favorite um, habit when you have the demonic dialogue, right? Um, the thousand cuts and you're just like, no way. Like, do you have a favorite Bible verse? Do you have a favorite, um, just like very human habit that you will go to when you're just like, uh, again, 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 enemy, again, like what's your favorite go-to just like habit? Uh, I pick up my weapons of light. Well, first of all, um, I, I've started learning to say Jesus come into this moment right now like right now. And I'm not afraid to ask him to do that. And the times that I do where I'm really getting angry or mad or frustrated or sick of my kids and the mess and, or Jason or whatever is happening, you know, cause it's life. Life is going to happen just because I'm married to Jason. He's married to me. Our marriage is not perfect. Our household is not perfect. Our children are not perfect. That's not going to happen, but we have to keep showing up to our fight no matter how hard it gets. But we also have to utilize the weapons that we have of, get that holy water, put it around your house, put, put Gregorian chants in the atmosphere. The evil one hates those things. Get your incense, make sure you're doing a rosary and praying with your family in the evening. Even if it's a circus and they're crawling all over you and you're breastfeeding and the dog's barking and whatever, or the blessed mother's looking down at you with such love, like they're showing up, this is happening, you know, and the graces will abound. But my biggest thing right now that I'm learning is like, Jesus, just come into this moment. And, you know, you have to do spiritual inventory of when you're starting to get overwhelmed and just, you can't just break free from something. And it's starting to become perpetual again in your life. And it's starting to become stronger than it used to be. You need to take that spiritual inventory and see, okay, when's the last time you went to confession? When's the last time you went to mass? Are you going to daily mass? Can you go to daily mass? Are you being called to that? I know as a mom, it's hard. And uh, whatever it is you can do, you really have that compass inside. And we act like we don't know, but I'm telling you, we all do. But at the same time, ladies, know you're going to fall. The fight is constantly going to be there. There's days where you're going to feel stronger than others, and that's okay. It's okay if you have some sort of relapse. What isn't okay is staying down and letting the evil one keep you down with your emotions, with those bad days, with those maybe going into depression, whatever it is, get up. You have to show up to your own fight. You have no idea the generations that can ripple from your decisions 
of not getting up and laying down and dying. And we are better than that. We're stronger than that. We belong to God. And it's like, sometimes it's like, how can he love me? What does he care about me? There's billions of people in the world. Right. So I was in adoration and I'm just like, I was really struggling with that. Actually, a couple of weeks ago, it was like this cloud. I'm like, really, is this really, you know, me and, and yes, me, I struggle like that. And it was beautiful. Cause I go to adoration and I felt like I had this image of the sacred heart of Jesus and it's in front of me. And then it exploded. Now bear with me. Okay. It exploded, but then it came back together and it looked like a puzzle piece and it had different names on it. All these different names. It was beautiful. Every puzzle piece that made up the sacred heart had all these puzzle pieces with different names on it. Lisa, Crystalina, Joseph, Jonathan, Mary. And all of a sudden I saw my puzzle piece come out a little bit. And Jesus said, I love everybody, but you own this one piece of my heart that is all yours, that no one can re replace, duplicate, and I would never replace it with anybody else. That is yours. And I love you. And it belongs to you. And there were pieces that were actually missing in his sacred heart. And, and I asked like, well, what are those? You know, I, I'm just like praying and this is my own personal prayer. And it's like, those are the people that rejected me. I felt like I heard that they, uh, they, and I will never replace them with anyone else. And I will long for them for all eternity, but they have rejected me. But it was beautiful to see that those empty places were there, but that he didn't fill it. He's God. He can fill that with anything and any, like anything, but he won't because there's something about like each of us have a piece of God's heart and we matter. We're important. And what you do with this life right now is important. And don't, don't sell yourself short and think your own testimony doesn't matter because it matters greatly to the world. Crystalina, I have one final question for you, although I could sure. legit talk to you all day. It's two, it's <laughs> two good. Good questions and you feel free to answer this as honestly as you want. Oh, absolutely. So if you had to describe it in just a few sentences, what do you feel like you uniquely have been called to do? And then what is keeping you currently from embracing that? I feel right now I am called to help other women recognize what God is calling them to be, recognize what's keeping them from that. It's almost just like, ladies, you matter what you do matters. And imagine if I didn't say yes to this book, I was terrified. I didn't want to do it. To be honest with you, I was really scared. And this is the first book that I've done uh, away from Jason. And I did this completely on my own. And, and he was so busy wrapped up in projects. I felt like God's like, uh, uh, let's step into the fear. Let's go. And it was just like, okay, you know, and I want my courage, hopefully that will ignite courage in other women to not be afraid to not be afraid of whatever God is asking you to do, that you've got this because God's got you and that you matter. I want women to know that they matter no matter where they've been, what they've done, what has happened to them, that it's never too late to start over, begin anew and embrace whatever it is that God is calling to you because you never know really what he can do with you, through you, but you have to do it with him. And, and it's something powerful and all of us have that and no one is exempt. We all have a seat at the table. No one is exempt from that. Everybody has a place. Everybody, uh oh, every I have ear pod problems, and everybody has everybody has a seat at the table. And and don't ever let the devil steal that from you. And I think that's the biggest thing. And right now, what's keeping me? It's interesting you asked me that, Lisa. So I was at Seek. I was speaking at Seek, and there was a priest a long time ago who really helped me start my first healing process. He was there. And he asked if he could pray with me. And I was like freaked out because I'm like, first time he prayed with me, you like open a Pandora's box. But I'm like, if it's God's will, here you are. So let's pray. And oh, it was it was hard because just like you ladies, um, I, he's like, Christina, you've done some amazing progress in your life, right? But he goes, but it's like your leg was broken and we have to reset. They reset it and it was broken. But now you have to go in and heal um, the ligaments. Mm -hmm. And I said, excuse me? Like, <laughs> like kind of mad, like, excuse me, what do you mean I have to go in and heal the ligaments? But there's still a lot of emotional issues that I have to go in and that maybe I've been afraid to confront, especially about my sexual healing and things like that. And the thing is, I'm not ashamed of what happened to me. I can sit here and I can talk to the world about it because God really has healed so much in me. But there's layers, ladies. So like I said, don't get discouraged. Don't get overwhelmed because just like me, I'm just starting this kind of like 
I don't know, part two of my own healing process, but I'm not afraid. Is it going to be hard? Was it a little discouraging? Absolutely. But at the same time, do I know Jesus is with me? You better believe it. And whatever it is he wants to show, reveal, or heal, I'm all in because either you're all in with Jesus, you can't go halfway. So I'm all in and I'm like, let's go. <laughs> and that's what we have to do. Thank you for sharing that so vulnerably. Um, I've tried to do it halfway. Like you can't, right? Because he's relentless. And I mean that in a good way. Like he's, yes. he's relentless. He will continue to present you a situation that will quote unquote force you, invite you, whatever you, however you pursue want. you. He's pursuing you, Lisa. Pursue and pursuing take, everybody. And right? It's so funny because every time I go through another situation, I'm like, Lord, I, I get it. Like I'm like, I trust you. But clearly there's clearly there's more to come. All right, my friend, where can people go to learn more about your beautiful brand new book, Women Made New Reflection on Adversity, Transformation and Healing? If they want the book, they can go to EWTNRC.com or it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, but to really learn everything that's going on, EWTNRC.com and also womenmaynew.org and they can download the first chapter and see if they want to read the book. Kristalina Everett, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure and always so much fun to talk with you, Lisa. I look forward to having you on my podcast next on EWTN. I love it. Anytime. My friends. I hope you listen to this podcast the next time you are tempted to let that next cut be the one that gets you. Do you know what I mean? Like the perseverance part, I think, is where it's like boot camp. You know, it's like that's the next the next um, hundredth uh, lunch or the next hundredth crunch you need to do. You know what I mean? Like, but this is where like, the rubber hits the road, the perseverance part. So I hope this is the kind of podcast that you can pop into your earbuds when you are feeling discouraged, when you are feeling like I can't take one more cut because guess what? You can, and you're not alone in any of it. All right, my friends, we'll see you next time.